Hi, welcome to Atrocious Gameplay. Today, we are going to be looking at a little bit of Expanded. Now, now that the bans have happened that you may have heard me talk about on the Metapod podcast that I do with Gyroshawn every single Tuesday, Expanded is a lot more fun and a lot more enjoyable and a lot more people are playing it, including the introduction of a lot more events and tournaments that you can participate in online with Expanded. So I'm making this one a Saturday Expanded video. We're going to be going over one that I think a lot of you may be able to afford. It's not super expensive um, in terms of the cards that are in it. It is based around a beloved card in the Pokemon trading card game, and that is Tapu Koko Flying Flip. Now, this ran the tail for a long time in terms of spread decks, and with the introduction of VMAX Pokemon and Pokemon that have well over 300 HP, does Tapu Koko and Flying Flip still perform pretty well? Now, I will say first, this is not my deck list. I saw this in the Limitless Online Weekly Series number 10 that was expanded. That is happening earlier today, if you're seeing this on the day of the release, this Saturday. This is a deck made by Cannon. Taku Cannon. Sorry if I butchered your name. I guarantee that I butchered your name. I'm trying my best out here. But before we do the first game, make sure if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Produce videos on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday of different things of the Pokemon trading card game. And we have a great time, I will say. Tournaments are coming up in terms of the team challenge and things like that. So I'm really excited to be able to produce videos of that and such for you all to enjoy. But for now, let's go into this first game. Now, start. we start with the mulligan. That's totally okay. We'll see what my opponent is playing. Could be really anything. We do have the Flying Flip Coco, which is really nice. That's my mulligan right there. Tapu Coco, very cool card because it has that free retreat. Makes it very, very dangerous. We have some Ultra Ball here to get us some other Pokemon. And it might be a Mewtwo deck utilizing the Battle Compressor and this uh, Tina right here. That is the Mewtwo deck that utilizes Mega Gardevoir. Now that could be really interesting because they play something like the Dimension Valley. And Dimension Valley allows us to... Sorry, I'm trying to think now that they've just left this in the active for the turn. Trying to think about what I want to do at this point. Let's see what the Acrobite gets us. Acrobite gets us a research. I kind of like that. I'm pretty okay with it. Um, I don't like getting rid of these two energies, though. We're not down energy, so this doesn't matter. And then the rainbow energy is not really going to do anything for us. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to go really aggressive. We're going to go super aggro. Um, probably want to throw away the rainbow energy first. Yeah, let's do this. Let's throw away these two energies. Let's see what we can grab. We could do Psy Wave. That could help us possibly, probably. I don't even know if that could actually help us in the long run now that I think about it. Um, watch and Learn could happen. Second Strike. Nothing to KO turn one, sadly. Um, so we might as well do a little bit of setup. This Rule of Evil could be pretty good because Mewtwo and a lot of other Pokemon that this deck would play in terms of draw support and things like that could have abilities so i don't think we rescue stretcher i think we just go because i kind of want to flying flip turn one um so we'll see if we get to do that and it looks like we're not going to be able to but we could use something if we want in terms of something that is one energy maybe a colorless energy i would think but let's see let's go teammates and counter catcher we need just a little bit, so I don't want to throw away the N yet, but Psy Wave isn't going to really do anything. Second Strike isn't going to do anything. Watch and Learn really won't. Um, we could use the other Rescue Stretcher and just go straight into a Filch. Draw two cards. That might be what we have to do at this point, so I probably should have held on to the... Probably should have held on to the uh, the the Ultra Ball that I have right here because I'm not really using it for anything. But let's just go Rescue Stretcher. Let's get that Mimikyu back and let's at least do something during this turn because even though um, it is Counter Energy and it's the same 
we have the same amount of prizes we are going to be able to filter and draw two cards because it is at least one colorless so it's better than nothing not great by any means um but it is it is something again so hopefully we can do it we do have the opportunity to get a teammates next turn i don't know if i want to go get a teammates to be honest be a little tricky interesting if they cynthia right now hmm they are they are a little bit dead in the water so um let's see if we do get a uh never mind i was gonna oh what is this gardevoir so this is interesting using just a straight up gardevoir ex that's not something that you see too often i feel like so we're gonna keep going through this we're gonna go here to grab i think we're gonna grab research to be honest because we don't want to reset their hand at all i don't think and then also we can use this ultra ball to get rid of these two and grab a pokemon so fairy typing right here weak to metal we don't have anything that is metal um so we just got to stick to what this is and i'm thinking about maybe watch and learn watch and learn seems like something that could be potentially dangerous um in this so maybe we could do this we do have this uh, shrine of punishment right here so i think we're gonna lay this guy down yeah we're gonna lay this guy down right now we're gonna go muscle band right here we're gonna go muscle band right here we're gonna go double colorless right here retreat boom go into right there we could no that would be after we get knocked out um use slash to be able to take out a knockout on the tina but it doesn't look like the tina is moving really at all um, we're definitely going to take this versus seeker for next turn so that we can grab what we need and try to get some sort of advanced board state but we're just gonna be a little bit patient and just kind of spread the damage around for now now the damage is almost irrelevant on these tinas because these tinas um, will get knocked out so because of this evolution right here and this attachment they're going to be able to despair ray and get rid of all of these pokemon right here so uh we got to be a little bit wary of that if we despair ray that's 110 um plus 10 more each i don't think that would be a good idea to use a watch and learn i think i'd well, we could use copy copycat would actually be the same thing so maybe maybe slash is fine this is a mega evolution rule not necessarily an ability so despair ray gonna get rid of all of these probably all uh yeah four of those right there um we need something that does 180 damage and i don't think we can reach it if we go despair ray so this Weavile does have free retreat though, so I think it's fine to do this. Um, we only need 160 now, actually. We only need 160 for a watch and learn because of the Shrine of Punishment. I almost forgot about that. Um, so that's 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160. Okay, so we actually just win. Yeah, we actually just win, I think because of the pseudo widow doing regular damage so we're gonna go right here i think i'm going to i'm gonna end just in case i feel like i'm missing something but i don't know i could have i could maybe be bming right here uh in the early game but not on purpose not on purpose i'm pretty sure this math is correct but i guess we just live and die on this play right now Yeah, we win. Okay, so there's that try to punishment, and we just win. I was gonna, I was like sweating for a little bit. I saw that Gardevoir not faded. I was like, oh no, what's going on? And then I was like, oh okay. So math is incredibly essential in this deck. So if you are not a math wizard like myself, I am not a math wizard. Um, this deck is a little bit difficult for you and gives you a little bit of anxiety because you're doing spread. You have a lot of different situations where you want to move damage around or you want to manipulate the board state so then you get a uh then you get a perfect ko and things like that so let's just go on to the second game hopefully it provides a little bit more than that first one did in terms of amount of time so let's go tails right here 
And this is this is a fun deck. I mean, it's not the best deck I would say in the format as of right now, but it is something that I've really enjoyed playing up to this point. It is something that has been a lot of fun. And uh I don't know. I definitely I definitely spend some time playing it. Spread decks are always usually generally fun in my opinion. Um, because they produce a lot of damage on the board state and they feel like they have a lot of math and things like that that go into it. So I'm not 100% sure what we're playing yet. They're Leon. Okay, so we're playing a baby Charmander deck. This is another deck that I've seen on the Limitless Weekly series if you've checked out Limitless. Or I'm sorry, playlimitless.com um, in their weekly tournament if you looked at all the deck lists. So this will be very interesting in my personal opinion, especially when we get to this Weavile, because this Weavile does 60 damage on everybody on the field that has an ability. And once these bad boys evolve into Charizard, every single Pokemon is going to have an ability on the field for my opponent. So doing a little bit of spread at first, boom, 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 and then boom, going into the uh, going into the Weavile. Now, this hand, aside from that, is absolutely garbage. I don't know um, if they keep popping off how they're going to, uh, how we're going to be able to stay up with them, but Battle Compressor, very good card with this deck. Able to get all your Leons in the deck as soon as possible. So you see there, four Leons, max damage for the Charizard in terms of um, in terms of just having them simply in the discard. There are other effects such as Versus Seeker that allow you to do even more damage, but oh boy, another, I think we keep the double colorless to be honest. I mean, I don't know. Uh, we go right here and we just go flying flip, I guess. Yeah, I don't see any other route that goes on here. We just go flying flip and we say whoop dee and uh, ugh, not looking good, but maybe they evolve into a Charizard. Hmm. If they evolve into Charizard, though, I don't. I'm not sure what the uh, what the game plan for us is at this point. But um, might actually want to just attach a Rainbow Energy to the Weavile instead of the Counter or the uh, Double Colorless, because with the Rainbow, you know, we only need one Energy to be able to use Rule of Evil. So. Um, there's the giant hearth right there. The giant hearth's not gonna help us, but if they do, though, only get one attack off, that's pretty okay by them. They're fine just sitting and looking pretty dandy at this point. Um, I'm just gonna try to build up as much as possible before I have to Weavile, and boom, there's that right there. We can actually just get rid of that giant hearth right now. I might as well get rid of that, and then uh, go right here on the double colorless evolve into Weavile and kind of show them like, whoa, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm stuck. So, <laughs> so these are two really weird games, a game that ended very, very fast where this deck ended up being very powerful. And then a second game to where we've just kind of sat and twiddled our fingers to an extent. Now it looks like they're going to be able to evolve. Oh no, they're going to collect. Okay. That's actually pretty okay, in my personal opinion. Sweet, we do get this, so we are going to Colress. It draws us uh, six cards, which is pretty okay. All right, that wasn't horrible. Wasn't the worst thing in the world. So we could go, I mean, this isn't great by any means, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, <laughs> we could actually go Ultra Ball. What would Ultra Ball get us, though? What would Ultra Ball do for us? Ultra Ball would be able, would let us get a, a Pseudo Widow, allow us to get a Continuous Tackle Larvitar, allow us to get a Lele. I'm not sure what it would get us. Victini, no, we don't want Victini right now. I don't really know if I want Watch and Learn because we can't do that much damage. Magical Swap, possibly, but. I don't know what Magical Swap would really do for us. I mean, I guess if they just sit here for another turn, we would be able to get something going. So maybe let's just, I guess, let's do it. Um, let's put this Lele down. Let's Rescue Stretcher. What's in this discard? Coco, Flying Flip, and Weeva. We have another Rescue Stretcher. So let's just go... Let's just shuffle the three Pokemon. Let's just put them back in for now. Um, maybe reveal to them that we have this counter energy right here. 
Yeah, let's just show them this counter energy and do a flying flip and have a zero card hand. Maybe they'll whiff a Charizard one time, so then I take three knockouts this turn. That would be absolutely insane. Um, but I kind of highly... Oh, I guess they're just going to scoop. I guess maybe they would have lost all their Charmanders. So they kind of bench locked themselves in the sense that they couldn't have any more draw support, whether that was like a Lele, a Dedenne, another Crobat. Um, and without the Giant Heart, they couldn't really thin their deck. So two quick games right there, two wins. Let's try to get a third win in this. Let's play a third game, maybe beef this video up a little bit. We've only been going like 15 minutes in this video, and, the, and it hasn't even been that exciting of games. But I think we want to go second because of Flying Flip Coco is very cool and very powerful. So that's kind of what I felt like. And then starting something that is not... Um, Starting something that is not the Coco always feels really, really bad in my opinion, but let's see. We will be able to Ultra Ball and get a Coco and be able to put a Telescopic Sight on it, which is really, really nice. Um, let's go ahead and go here, here, so then we can get that Coco out now. Let's go here, Flying Flip Coco. Flying Flip Coco could actually be really good because if they put a Thunder Mountain out, um, that's really, really nice for us in my opinion, but... Let's go here. Let's go here. Probably should have acrobiked first, um, but we've got this. We'll be able to filch because I I'm pretty sure we're not going to be able to retreat, um, or at least if we do retreat, we won't be able to attack. So um, I think that this is fine. I'm thinking about if I want to ultra ball, and I don't think I do want to ultra ball to be honest, um, at least yet. So we'll just draw two cards right here. Boom, boom. And let's see now something that i do want to put in this list um that i i haven't made any change to this list i just want to check this out but one thing i do want to put in is a unbroken bonds mew or some sort of bench protection because with this deck you're playing a lot of small pokemon that do small damage all right it may be a little bit of spread and maybe some manipulation damage but a tag bolt is going to knock out two pokemon and accelerate that prize trade for a Picaram player. So that's one thing that I would say that I really, really want against a Picaram deck because Picaram, if you look at the Limitless Weekly, it's 20% of that meta almost is Picaram in itself. And it looks like this is actually going to be Nuzzle instead of Picaram. Okay, this this might actually change the matchup a little bit now that, it, now that I see that it's a... Uh, um, a nuzzle because spread damage is what we want like right we want to hit a lot of pokemon on the field especially smaller pokemon that's really really nice for us so the telescopic sight really isn't going to matter too much but with this weavile right here we actually ko off these two amolgos off the rule of damage so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to lead off coco as you always usually should um we're going to evolve into this weavile right here um we're going to do this. We're going to go. We're going to attach this right here because we're going to go into that guy. We're going to go right here and here. Yeah, we're going to go right there and there. We're going to grab a Sneasel. Going to put you there. We're going to attach to you. We'll special charge because this is going like we're going to Sycamore this turn. We're going into Sycamore. Boom, 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 boom. A lot of cool stuff. Um, shrine of Punishment won't do anything, so I want to wait on the Shrine until we get an opportunity to do the thingamadoodah. Um, the Bolt Storm's not really going to do much. Electrify isn't either, I don't think. It is Lightning Energy cards. It doesn't say Basic Lightning, so maybe it could work. But if we just go here... We go ahead and we knock out um, these two Pokemon right here. Take two prizes right away. Um, Rule of Evil, boom. Take out those two. And then we kind of threaten another Weavile at a certain point. But um, there's a teammates right there. That's a really good card to get to be able to knock out more of those Emolgas that maybe come out on the field if we want to do that again. But... Here comes a Raichu, here comes a Bolt Storm. We could do a little bit of spread at this point. Again, we've got this Coco right here. Um, it's an even amount of prizes. They've got a couple prizes out here. So we'll go 
right here will hit with a Larvitar. Larvitar would actually be really, really nice. Um, but I think I want to reveal that later. I don't want to reveal that right now. So we're going to go teammates and go into a Electro Power. We could just go like double E power, but I think it'd be better if we just like go a supporter of some sort um, for next turn. We could... We could go Larvitar. Larvitar would seal the amount of damage. Well, we don't need the muscle band is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, I think this is probably fine. I think Lysander is kind of okay. Actually, we should go here because I expect our Pokemon to get knocked out every single turn. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's do that. Let's go here with the E power. Let's go. Let's go double colorless here because we'll be able to counter energy next turn. And then, um, and then yeah, let's just sit here and look pretty and go flying flip. Boom, we do 50 damage. That way, Larvitar is going to guarantee a KO where before it didn't do enough damage. Um, so that'll be good. We'll be able to take two prizes out of this. And then uh, the only problem is if they retreat this dude because they knock out with the Raichu, which would honestly be a pretty good play. Um, nope, they're just going to go into a Bolt Storm. That's pretty good for us. I like that. I, I, ex I guess they don't expect us to have this Larvitar as of right now. So we're going to go right here to Larvitar. We're going to attach this counter energy right here. We're going to retreat into it. Um, we're going to Versus Seeker for a teammates as well. Um, I just, man, the, the pseudo Wado doesn't really do much right here. doesn't really do much in this matchup. So we'll go right here into teammates. Um, we'll go right here and grab another Versus Seeker and maybe a uh, Rescue Stretcher. That might be a good idea. So then we can get Larvitar again. And then next turn, we can teammates for like double colorless and muscle band or something like that. Because those things already have damage on it. Plus the continuous tackle knocks those two out. So that would be really good, I feel like. Nightcap's not really going to do anything. Mm, okay, I think this is a fine play. I think this is fine. Yeah, and then we can go like teammate. We can go teammates into like uh, um, double colorless and something else. But here we go. Let's grab these two. Let's grab these two. Let's go. We still don't need trine. We still don't need that. We still do 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 do. And then we just go second strike. Already has damage counters on it. Boom. Knocked it out for the weakness. 160 knocks out those two. So. Um, the only problem would be if they brought up this guy and evolved them, which they probably no. They, I mean, they might not have it, so we might get another turn with this unless they like pop Coco. Um, well, they just need one more energy to be able to take a knockout, so um, that's where this comes in. Life do okay, so good thing we kept this field blower um, because then we can go ahead and take a prize. Ooh, that's close. That is close with that life do there. Um, we do need something though next turn. The only, the biggest problem that I see here is we need something that's going to KO soon. Um, we don't really have that at this point, so. Um, in terms of the late game, so we're going to combo right now. We're going to go Rescue Stretcher, grab the Larvitar, put it in our hand. We're going to put a Larvitar down. We are going to Versus Seeker for teammates again. We've got Field Blower to get rid of that. So let's go right there. Let's go Teammates to grab Double Colorless. And maybe we grab a Rescue Stretcher again. What do they grab off the prize? Probably the Raichu. Yeah, so we know they have Raichu. We know they have Raichu in this. We have no way to reset the hand. Hmm, the muscle band could help us, I guess, but not anything crazy. I guess we just go right here. We go double colorless right here. We retreat, go up to here. 
I just wish we had a little bit of spread damage going on. We do have this, which could be nice, but I guess we'll take this to be able to use and we'll go second strike, boom. Oh, they have to have three or more damage counters on them. That's right. I totally forgot about that. All right, so I think we lose this game. I don't think there's a way that we win at this point now. I, I think I screwed up. I forgot about the one um, that they need. But if we... Trying to think. Yeah, I just don't think there's a win con now. I think that was just a little bit too oof. Um, I'm not sure maybe what we could have done differently in this game. I'm trying to think about what we could have done. I don't know, just our deck copies a lot of attacks, whether that's like this or the, the watch and learn. And the, our deck just really doesn't like doing that. It's just not that great for against us or for us, I should say. Um, but... I don't think we can reach 120. We can go here. We can go. Can go right here. We do have counter catcher to bring this one up. Can teammates. We can teammates for like E power. No, we don't have any more E powers. We have to go muscle band and. Muscle band, and we don't have an N. I mean, our N is gone. We, I wish we could have end this game. I just think that might have helped us a lot um, to be able to stall out what they were doing, but I guess we just grab another colorless or maybe, yeah, let's grab the colorless. So we go right here, we hit the E power. I don't think we KO though, that's the problem. Um, because we didn't have another one. I mean, we needed a little bit more than that, but yeah. So we'll call that a GG's. Let's play one more game with this deck. Let's see if we can get the math a little bit better than what we did and have a little bit of a better game. But man, three weird games, three weird games so far. So let's see what we can do. Maybe three for four. That would be pretty good Four videos or four games in a single video. That's actually pretty nice in my opinion. I like going second with this deck um, because a lot of times I start off with this Coco or I might get something like if I started off like the Mimikyu last game where I just end up using Filch. Um, that's not the worst thing in the world. It's it's not great, but it's not the worst thing in the world. They do have this Senna Scorch right here, which I do not like. We have the E power. We have the Colrus. Colrus wouldn't really draw us anything. Um, but we'll acro bike, see what we get. We do have an ultra ball. Do have an ultra ball to be able to get us a Pokemon. We could put a punch of Pokemon down and then just go Colrus. So we could go like here. We could go here. We can attach right here. We can get rid of these two grab a let's grab let's grab sneasel no i don't think sneasel is going to be that great maybe no not pseudo widow no maybe we do well let's grab coco flying flip coco flying flip coco is probably actually pretty good and then we can chorus for at least three <laughs> which doesn't really improve us at all because we can't use any of these attacks so I guess maybe we give them Lele at this point. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we just give them Lele. We we throw that guy right there and then we just go ahead and pass. A little bit of no draw support happening for us. Uh, maybe we'll get lucky and we'll get a Versus Seeker for either the teammates or the Colrus. But here's a big dude. Uh, being able to accelerate energy. Santa Scorch, a deck that Luke Morza actually uh, kind of brought into the last expanded event. And it looks like they're not going to be able to knock out. So we do get an N, which is really nice. We're going to put this guy right here. And then we're just going to N. Still no energies. <laughs> Still no energies. Um, yeah, I think we just... 
hopefully maybe they just knock us out they find the evolution after we reset their hand we're just gonna go ahead and pass and just kind of wait it out at this point And it looks like they're going to be using the big dog here in this game. Charizard VMAX. Very uh, interesting, I will say. So, Whitney. Okay, this is a really interesting deck. Um, but Burning Train, going to be able to knock out. We're going to bring up a Flying Flip guy. And we do, again, have teammates, so that's really nice. Uh, we'll go here, see what we can get. Versus Seeker or Rescue Stretcher? Probably Versus Seeker, I would think. Um, we'll verse the seeker right here to grab the teammates Be able to end later in the game, which will be really really nice for us, but Let's see I kind of want shrine and I want double colorless because I want to be able to bounce this so then they don't have any more support um Yeah, that might just have to be our play at this point. All right, so we're going to go here and here. We're going to bounce for the shrine. We're going to attach this right here. We'll play the E-Power. Why not? And then Rescue Stretcher. I don't think I want that yet. I want to wait on that. And then we'll go Flying Flip. And boom. We do extra damage, 50 to both Pokemon. Uh, not the greatest thing in the world. This thing has a lot of health, 250 to be exact. Um, these are going to be big beefy three prizes and this is what I was talking about with the introduction of VMAX Pokemon like I said at the beginning of the video you know can this deck keep up with those things this is a really cool idea this is a really cool concept but I'm not 100% sure that it could necessarily keep up if that makes sense um, we're going to see I kind of honestly like the idea of the flying flip Coco and the Sable IV a little bit more because Sable IV allows you to get that win con of knocking out those big beefier Pokemon um, and that's just that's just really powerful in my personal opinion so we do put the Sneasel right here um, there are things that do have abilities so I guess we'll do this and we'll go teammates We'll go teammates, we'll grab, we'll grab a versus seeker because we probably want to end next turn and we'll go double colorless. So not looking super great in my opinion at all, but um, it could be, it could be worse, I guess. We could already have lost. That's a, that's a way to look at it, I feel like, but we'll go flying flip right here. Um, they have four prizes left. I want to wait to put the Pokemon back in until I um, lose this Coco at this point. So I guess we'll go flying flip. Boom, spread some damage, do a, do a 40 right there, and not looking great, not looking great, but again, fun deck, cool, cool spread deck. We've had some rough games, I feel like, though, where we've just kind of sat with a dead hand um, at certain points, so maybe that's something to think about and and like i was mentioning with the sable iv earlier you know you have the ability to utilize cards like dark patch dark patch is super good um and allows you to do a lot of different great things in my personal opinion um we could actually watch and learn for 180 on the burning train especially because we have the pseudo widow out now so that's actually really cool um that we can do so let's shuffle the three one two three maybe we could have done that last turn um, I don't think it would have KO'd. You have 160, so if we can find it um, after this turn, we will KO, which will be really nice. And then they'll be stuck with the Charizard and the uh, uh, this dude right here. So we do find Counter Energy. We are down on prizes, so we will be able to watch and learn Pseudo Widow and take a Knockout, which is really, really nice. Um, we'll go right here. We will retreat. Boom, and now we have a way to retreat as well at the end of the turn. I'm going to Acrobike right here. We could grab, I'm going to grab Computer Search, but use it for next turn or something like that. Um, there we go. There's a KO right there. Again, not going to be able to use Pseudo Widow anymore just because of, just because of its, uh, its uh, watch and learn. Unless they do end up using Claw Slash for a knockout, which would be fine, I guess. Um, they do have a welder. They must have two energies. No, just one energy. I don't know why they wouldn't have Giant Hearth. Maybe the, everything in their hand was just too good um, to not use that. But we could Void Tentacles now this turn. Do 300 damage. Take three prizes. Pretty poggers in my opinion. 
pretty poggers, I feel like. So we go here. I'm going to put a flying flip Coco down now. I, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest, what we can do to win in the following turns. Unless their hand is just absolutely dead. Um, we can go computer search. Go right here and here. I do plan on using Cynthia. So, oh, I should have attached the rainbow energy. I just realized that. I just realized that we should have attached a rainbow energy. Because if we had just... Because of this guy right here. We could have grabbed maybe the other shrine as well. That is something that probably could have been good. But we have this field blower right here. Which, it's going to do the same thing. But I'm actually really mad that I messed that up. And, and put, the, uh, put the wrong energy on. That could cost us very much so later in the game. So... Um, I think I kind of want to rescue stretcher the Yeah, I think I kind of want to get that pseudo widow back to be honest because I want to possibly be able to do that later I guess um, but we'll go ahead and go nightcap and we will use We'll just go ahead and use G-Max uh, Wildfire because it takes a knockout and it kind of sets them back a bit. So there's that 300 right there. We lose that energy again. I, I again wish that I didn't do that, but it's fine. It's totally okay. Um, we have a Coco right here. We have... Hmm. We need to be able to knock this guy out. So um, watch and learn... What we could do is if we do find a uh, if we do find a rainbow energy, if we find that rainbow energy, we could actually just win this turn. Um, fun fact. So I think I'm going to go aggressive for it. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try to thin out as much as possible at this point um, because we still they still have two prizes left. Um, we're going to save the psi wave just in case we're going to grab the other Coco. We're going to do this. We're going to go here, here. We're gonna grab the Victini because I don't I don't think I need Victini. I feel like Victini is one of those cards that I feel like I could take out. It's only a hundred, but oh man, this is our last chance to hit the Rainbow Energy right here. We got five cards remaining. Um, Counter Energy is not gonna do it. Double Colorless not gonna do it. Oh, and it doesn't hit. It does not hit. I'm a little upset about that. Um, we can't even do anything at this point. We can't even do anything. So let's see. The watch and learn will be good. We could do. I mean, the watch and learn could be nice because they'll be able to. Well, that would only do 120, 130. Well, let's see. 120, 140, 160. We'd have to do damage this turn. We'd have to do damage this turn, which we we can't. We don't have anything that has a free thing. So, man, unless they go ahead and attach more energies, I don't think that could happen, though. Um, if I was my... They do. They attach a double colorless. Oh, they just gave us the win. Oh, no, they didn't because we're not down on prizes. Never mind. I guess we could research and get that rainbow energy, though. The rainbow energy actually wouldn't matter, though. So, no, we played ourselves. <laughs> we played ourselves at this point. Yeah, I don't think... I think because there's only one prize left. I don't know. I don't think there is a way that we win. Unless we have... Unless we do this. Unless we had done that. If we had gone with... No, the Mimikyu still wouldn't have worked. Unless we had, like, attached you know the the counter energy at one point during that turn but yeah i don't i don't think we can win i don't think we can win now maybe just like go up here and try to trap this guy at this point go like double colorless right here lele doesn't matter too much and just go flying flip bam do some damage but yeah we Man, I man, I thought I had a game plan in this game, and it turns out that it ended up not working. There's a Malolana switch to be able to get the KO. 
and uh man that's a tough game that is a tough game if only we had saved um if only we had saved our different uh different attackers like this guy right here this guy would have easily won us the game because they attached extra energies um we could have attached to it in the previous turn and then attached to it again just gone the aggressive research so there's a lot of things to remember with this deck that's a that's one of the things that i want to say but let's check out the deck and see the list all right so this is the list that we were working with today it is weavile tapu coco flying flip there's a lot of things that play abilities right now so i think this weavile is actually pretty decent in my personal opinion because especially when you have something like telescopic sight you can actually do 90 damage to all the dedenes all the crowbats all the leles um in two shot them in two turns so that's actually really really cool in my personal opinion it's a box so like especially with the spread this is an instrumental card with the lele being able to magical swap and you got coco to kind of spread damage throughout every single turn whether that is 50 to the gx's because of the telescopic sight doing 50 to the active because of the uh, muscle band or even using the electro powers as part of the extra damage that you can provide and later manipulate and things like that it does have something like teammates to be able to have that um consistent get what you need type of grind and this is a really really cool list if there's anything that i would really change in this list though it's that i would change this victini to something like a mew um i understand what the victini is meant to do you know you have a lot of basic pokemon you have a lot of pokemon that you can put on the bench at a time and so v create with a counter energy could be able to allow you to finish off a pokemon um, that may be a little bit beefier or maybe you're facing another kind of one prize deck and you can't spread to ko so you might as well ko the active if you've got a full bench i understand what this victini is here for but i i just don't think that this victini for me personally is good especially with picaram running around all the time so personally i would change this into like an unbroken bonds mew um, so this guy right here to be able to protect the bench or i would go the bench barrier mr mime um, so this one right here, I think actually, which one has more HP, which one has more HP, the Mew or the Mr. Mime? Okay. So the Mew does. So I would actually put the Mr. Mime in because the Mr. Mime has more HP. It's more, um, against like other spread decks, possibly this would just be better. I feel like, and you know, there's nothing that specifically says, you know, grab a psychic Pokemon in this deck. So, um, it kind of ends up working out. Plus, I guess, I mean, you could use juggling if you want. <laughs> I wouldn't really recommend it though. Um, but again, I would much prefer the Sable IV version of this build and like maybe the, maybe like Sable IV, Tapu Koko Flying Flip and the, uh, and the, uh, the Roxy Chomp type deal because that's really, really cool with the Executes possibly. Um, you can still use this Weavile. You can still go like, I don't know, like a 2-2 of the Weavile if you want in this list. You can knock it down to a 2-2, take out all these other attackers or something like that and maybe put in like, or maybe even just tech in a Sableye um, and make this focus a little bit more towards the idea of dark energies. Have a couple like dark energies in there with some dark patches possibly. Um, there's a lot of ideas that you can run with this deck, especially with spread. Um, this is kind of more of a spread and a little bit of counter box, I guess, added into it with the Mimikyu right here for the ultimate rays, for the um, Larvitars to hit the lightning Pokemon that are around. Pseudo, watch and learn Pseudo Widow for anything like Zorark, Eternatus, um, Picaram, things of that nature. Nightcap is just really, really good in my personal opinion, especially when you're a one prize deck and ADP is a card. So they're knocking out the one prizers. Boom, they eventually go down to two prizes or they just go single prize throughout the game and they prob more than likely um, hit a situation where they go down to two prizes, especially if you have this bench barrier and against um, something like a Reshiram or a Pikaram or anything that hits multiple Pokemon in a single turn. Um, so this could be really, really interesting. I did like this deck. I think there could be some other things played, but Expanded is a lot of fun right now, especially with the ban of Shaman, the Melodic from Flashfire, um, Junk Hunt, Sableye, and Orangaroo. Like those four bands right there have inc 
have incredibly improved this format. There's still a lot of things that I think should be done in this format, but that's a conversation for a later day. I hope you liked this video. Make sure again, like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed this. I was able to get four games in this today, and, and we misplayed a little bit, but Expanded is a little bit beefier, and this deck requires a lot of thinking and a lot of different situational practices. I just kind of picked up this deck today at the day of this recording, just started playing it and just started enjoying it. So remember, we're not very good at video games or card games, but we have fun time doing it. The team challenge again is starting back up. Make sure to sign up before um, the first event that happens. I believe you do that through RK9 Labs in the store that you choose to participate with. Um, and you know what? I hope you have a great time. I'm going to try to do as many of those as possible, the four tournaments, and then do like a video showcasing like what deck I played, how did I do, things like that. And we'll probably stream it on Twitch as well. Twitch.tv slash the church's gameplay, as you see in that corner. And have a great rest of the day. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Uh, brush your teeth. Um, use soap. Soap is actually really, really good for you, especially hand soap right now. And uh, yeah. Have fun. <laughs>